again, welcome to another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinand. And uh, we have something a little different for you today. We're down on Cape Cod uh, in South Yarmouth at the uh, Cultural Center of Cape Cod. And we're talking about a new a show that's here right now and that is going to be a two-part exhibition and it's called Paint and Switch. And we have the organizers of the show as our guests, uh, Norman Ringdahl and uh, Robert Nash, who is the director of the Cultural Center of Cape Cod. So I th thought maybe we'd start with uh, Bob Nash and have him tell you a little bit about this organization and this building and what, uh, this is a fabulous venue. I'm very happy to be included in this, in this show. Well, we're uh, very happy and, and lucky to have this building. Um, seven years ago, this building was in near ruin. Holes in the ceiling, uh, mold and mildew everywhere. You couldn't spend 15 minutes in this building. It would liter literally make you ill. So um, after uh, a lot of hard work and blood, sweat, and tears, um, voila, here we are. And uh, it's been a great thing. And you've kind of been at the helm of this whole uh, renovation, haven't you? I was, uh, I actually became the general contractor uh, who hired all the uh, trades to come in and uh, the building has all new mechanical systems, electric, plumbing, sprinkler system, heat and air conditioning. Uh, so it was uh, pretty much a, a gut as far as uh, hmm. mechanicals are concerned. What's wonderful about the building too, uh, in addition to the fact that historically it's so lovely. Now it was an old bank, right? It was. It was the Bass River Savings Bank. It was uh, built back in the day, uh, uh, 1930 to be exact, when there weren't banks on every corner. And uh, people come in and tell stories, uh, people from Falmouth on one end of the Cape and Provincetown on the other end of the Cape. And this was this the banking institution, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it has all That's these nice. little galleries around this main uh, central area. So I guess this is the main gallery, but there must be six or seven little galleries and a store, right. little museum yeah. sh gallery shop. Right, well, one of the galleries is actually the old vault. Uh -huh. And uh, that's uh, one of the... Uh, Where you the, put the high-end stuff. Yeah, the, I, I tell people that. But it's one of the favorite galleries for, uh, for young students, too. We do a lot of uh, school uh, children's exhibits. And when they come in, they'll say, uh, where's my artwork? And I say, it's in the vault. And if you want to see eyes light up. That's funny. That's, uh, so this show, how did this show uh, get initiated? Well... Um, I grew up in Worcester and have a strong Worcester connection to the arts. I was the, um, one of the founding members of the Grove Street Gallery. I ran my business out of the North Works building, which was Nash Studio Inc. I was a commercial photographer. I remember, yeah. And ever since I've been down here, I've been in the back of my mind wanting to come up with some type of a cultural exchange where I could introduce Worcester artists to the Cape and vice versa. And so that's how the And you knew Norman? Were yeah. you guys friends oh, in the old yeah, days? We right. spent lots and lots of time together for 30 or 40 years right. or so. Back, my wife, Christine, had a studio also in the Grove Street Gallery building at the time that Bob had his studio and other Worcester artists and renovated the space. And, you know, um, so you both put this idea together and well, the Bob, name of the show. Primarily Bob, I, Bob's idea. Okay. I, you know, he called me in the fall of last year, I don't know exactly when, it's probably September, October sometime, and proposed the idea of exchanging artists' works to promote the artists in, in new areas. And I thought it was a great idea right off the bat. I said, you know, let's, let's work on it, choose a time frame that works for both of us. Uh, you know, their season is more summer, the dead of the summer is really not the best season for us, so we chose this time frame. And it's yeah. just, you know, we each picked the artist. Bob picked the artists of his artists from the Cape that are going to show in Worcester, and I picked the Worcester artists that we're going to show here, and it just all evolved very naturally. So you have 15 artists yes. that will be showing in Worcester, and that show comes on what day? Uh, uh, May 19th, two weeks, um, May 19th, 2 to 5 p.m. So that's a Sunday afternoon, Sunday. May 19th. Right. 
and uh, that show will be up until when? Till June 16th, a Saturday. Okay. And then this show runs through the end of the month, sort of? May 26th, 26th. I believe. May 26th, okay. yes. Okay, yeah. all right. So um, you have 15 artists, right. and are they all local people? Throughout the Cape, um, pretty much uh, all the little towns and hamlets uh, around uh, this area. Um, I think uh, probably the furthest uh, is from Sandwich. Uh huh. And Norman, you mm -hmm. selected the artists for this half of the Paint and Switch show. Correct. So um, I want to at least mention the names of the artists. Sure. Uh, they're Gerard, Gerard Bluin, Bob Duffy, Bob Graves, Mike Graves, cousins, Carrie Nixon, teacher in Worcester, Norman Ringdahl, owner of the Prince and Potter Gallery, also a very good artist. His brother, J.R. Ringdahl, excellent painter also. Jack Sykes, Linda Simacola, Alan Small, and yours truly. So uh, you selected the artists. I did. And, uh, Tell us a little bit about the group that a lot of these painters are plein air painters. Well, a lot of our plein air painters, some are studio painters. Um, everybody that's represented here, we represent at the gallery, either on a regular basis or in specific shows that we've had in the past. Um, pretty much the, the cross-section that we work with in Worcester are more realists than people that are uh, doing abstracted work, but my brother's work is more uh, strictly abstract and your work is beautiful and I've always been an admirer of your work Susan I've, I've got to say that and uh, you know we've represented your work when I had the collector's gallery at one oh, point I in Worcester and we had a show ago. of your work and uh, and uh, so it was nice to intermingle some, um, some people that we hadn't shown in a length of time that kind of mixed it up and Bob was very interested in having you know different styles of work here that you know showed different subject matter either in landscape or you know abstract work, but the plein air painters, um, there's a group of plein air painters, Gerard Blue and Bob Duffy, who's in his 80s, that paints summer and winter and the, the, the coldest snowy weather still, you know. And I was talking great to him this morning, uh, or yeah. earlier in this afternoon at the opening, and he was saying he was out on the water this morning painting, as were four or five right. of those right. people. Right. Right. Mike Graves them. and Bob Graves were painting this morning. Bob Aiello, who's not with this show, but is a Worcester plein air painter. And, Lynn, and uh, Linda Sinicola was also out painting this morning before they came to the opening here. And, and uh, they're a great group of people. They're very supportive and they're sometimes critical of what you're doing, but their criticisms always open new areas of thought. Oh yeah, you know, I could do that a little bit differently and it would improve the subject of the composition or the the contrasts or whatever, and so they're just a great supportive group to get out with, and I, you know, you learn from people that paint different, but you know. There's quite a group in the Worcester area, I oh, in are. addition, that are also sort of connected with oh, this Oh, yeah, there's a probably, group. I don't know, at least yeah. a dozen, 15. I like the idea that they were on the job this morning, you know, they right. were out there this yeah. morning. They weren't putting this opening first, they right. Doing getting their out there first. and getting the <laughs> that getting the painting done was yeah. the most important Absolutely. thing today. Yeah, yeah when G Gerard departed, he was telling Norman, I, I've got to get going, I've got to get to Rhode Island because tomorrow morning I'm out there painting in Jamestown. Or Isn't that wherever. something? Oh, yeah. That's get wonderful. Get out and get prepared for tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, there's a certain uh, freshness and vibrancy about the work. Yeah. We were talking to a few of the artists and uh, one of the things they all said is when you go out and paint on location, you don't last for more than an hour or two. Oh. And so they said, when you know you only have an hour, you paint, you go right for yeah. it. You get yeah. right to the point. You're much more lively and spontane yeah. uh, spontaneous. Right. Oftentimes you don't get a finished piece of work necessarily in the two or three hours before light changes, weather changes, um, you know, whatever else it might be. It starts to rain when it wasn't rainy and that sort yes. of thing. But you, yes. it forces you to, you know, eye-hand coordination, like, you know, life drawing, that, you know, sessions. But it forces you to go for the big stuff, you know, the yeah. big composition, yeah, the big message, right. the big feeling right. that you want to get across. Right. But, uh, it, you know, even if you have the endurance to stand there and paint for three hours, the sun is never staying with you. Mm -hmm. 
but I think a lot of these works are just full of sunlight and yeah. fresh air right. and it very uh, creates a enjoyable. certain vitality yeah. and energy to them that sometimes that energy is hard to convey in a, a studio where you when sometimes you have too long to think about things and you do it things becomes intuitively too photographic and when you have too much time right <laughs> But this is just a wonderful asset. You've done a wonderful job with this building, and the people in the town must be thrilled. Yeah, they uh, are very happy that we have brought this around. For a, a long time, Yarmouth um, you know, was known for its uh, chlorine pools and all the hotels on Route 28. Really? Oh, wow. And it's beginning to change to the point that um, uh, people come here just for the cultural uh, sure. center. And there are a lot of cultural things. Yeah. Uh, I think that's about all we have time for today, but um, you know, I've really enjoyed being part of the show, and uh, it, the show is called Paint and Switch, and it's a two-part show. The first part being here with Worcester artists in the cultural center of Cape Cod, and then the second half of the show will be the artists selected by Bob Nash, and that will take place at the Prince and Potter Gallery in Worcester, opening May 23rd. May, and May, May, May 19th. 19th. And running through? Um, June 16th. And now we're ready for the second part of the Paint and Switch exhibition, which is uh, here in the Prince and Potter Gallery in Worcester on Highland Street. And uh, again, I have Norman Ringdahl, who's the proprietor of the Prince and Potter Gallery and Bob Nash, who is the co-partner who organized the show and who's the director of the uh, Cultural Center of Cape Cod. Um, well, this show is primarily the Cape Cod artists coming to Worcester, and uh, you selected those, I, I know, and uh, we'll be showing some of the images. What I'm struck by right away is the difference in the venue of the two places, uh, the difference in the type of venue. Uh, when we were showing you the cultural center, of course, that's a large space with uh, a nonprofit space that you've done wonders with in a historic building. Whereas Norman, your space is much, much uh, more packed with stuff and also uh, it's a commercial gallery. So uh, I think one of the things that's most interesting to me about that is the fact that you've been around so long. <laughs> how, how long have you been Ooh, the Prince and Potter Gallery? We've been Prince and Potter close to 38 years now. Started out as Chandler Street Crafts um, with three potters and myself. And, uh, we've been here since 1980, so 33 years um, in this location. Well, that is something that uh, should be noted because there aren't that many galleries that can yeah. stick around that long. Yeah. To what do you attribute your success? Because <laughs> that is Stubbornness, a success. <laughs> good old Swedish I, I think stubbornness. It's the oldest, <laughs> oldest gallery yeah. in Worcester, I well, guess. I you think say? the mix of work that we've got, both the um, two-dimensional and all the you know functional craft works, uh, you know usable art that's functional. Um, and the custom framing shop, you know, kind of balances each other nicely. So some have, you know, busy seasons and slow seasons, but they, you know, complement the, you know, for a, you know, a nice mix of things together. You know, certainly the, the talented artists that we work with, uh, you know. Um, How to, often do you, you know, you say a mix of fine arts and crafts and framing, and mm -hmm. how often do you mount exhibitions like this? Um, three or four times a year at the most. I mean, Bob has a much more aggressive changing schedule in his and exhibitions. And a lot more spaces. Um, for us, when we spaces. do a right. show, we you know, plan it, and you know, we do three or four a year. That's a lot for us to, to change things around that, you know, frequently enough and that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. so that's, you know, once a quarter, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, Bob, how many artists did you select for this uh, show from the Cape? Fifteen. Fifteen? Fifteen, mm -hmm. yes. I, I wanted, uh, I, Norman and I had uh, done a walkthrough of Norman's space and we came up with a number of 30. So I figured rather than recruit 30 artists, I'll recruit 15 and get two per. Right. So I like that. I like being able to see more than one of one, each right. artist. Yeah, exactly. I noticed that it's nice to be able to look at a wall 
and see pieces that relate to each other and you sort of get a feel for the artist's yeah. individual vision or voice or whatever you want to call that. Yeah. But uh, it's primarily a show of uh, plein air painting and landscape. Uh, uh, so, some yes, some no. I think it's probably more 50-50. You know, um, Mary Louise uh, Hutchinson, definitely a studio painter. Uh, Ronald Tinney, uh, definitely a studio painter. Uh, Lance Walker, um, Russell Voice, mostly plein air, but mm -hmm. also doing a fair amount of studio work. So. so you're distinguishing between plein air painting and people who paint landscape in the studio? Yes. But what I'm saying is it's a lot of landscape. And Correct. I was, and I was wondering which, if Which goes with the, um, uh, the, the environment that yes. Cape Cod artists live in. I mean, they're drawn to the landscape. Yes. Uh, I was out uh, last evening, and the light was just unbelievable. It was beautiful yeah, last night. You can't night. not be inspired yeah. by the, the Cape and area, no matter where you turn. And, and there was a painting everywhere you looked. Right. Yes. So. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's, uh, d would you say Cape Cod is really known for its landscape painting? Uh, per, uh, I would say so. Yeah. I would say so. Um, there is, you know, an underground of artists that are working in a very contemporary fashion mm -hmm. and abstract mm -hmm. and whatnot, but the majority you're going and to find... And up toward Provincetown, right. probably, yep. more contemporary work. Yes, mm -hmm. yep. And um, it's just... It's a magnet for artists to come there and paint the landscape. Sometimes beautiful places are magnets for the landscape painters, yeah, that's well, for sure. That's true, <laughs> How much of your uh, business is in, uh, would you say landscape painting is a very popular genre for you? I would say so, yeah. I, I think people relate to a subject matter they can understand more so than, I mean, we do a, a Paint the Town show every, for the last three years in the fall, which is Worcester area artists painting Worcester scenes, and it can be a variety of different things, but it's primarily realist oriented, and, you know, people respond to that mm -hmm. very well, so I'm yeah. very enthusiastic about seeing, you know, the, the Worcester response to the, the Cape Cod right. artists, because they're, you know, fabulous painters. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bob's put together a first-class showing of, you know, what I'd consider, you know, some of the best painters on the Cape. The mm -hmm. work is just outstanding. Done a great job, well, that, Bob. That was certainly the uh, the plan, and yeah. uh, I'm glad it worked out that way. But on the other hand, uh, w the Worcester artists showing on Cape Cod have gotten rave reviews. Yeah. Uh, people coming in have uh, just yeah. been amazed. Yeah. At, yeah. At Something a little different yeah. than what it, normally might be shown there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's always nice to shake up a little bit and open up people's yeah. eyes to yeah. something they haven't experienced yeah. before. Exactly. So uh, did you have something in particular that you went for when you made the selections or was it just? Uh, well, over the years uh, I've been introduced to uh, hundreds and hundreds of artists and um, so I had to re rely on my recollect as to who among them I wanted to be part of this show. So it was just your personal look for quality and Yeah, it I, like I, I wanted artists or? that were working at a particular level. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. the Cultural Center is all about uh, supporting emerging artists, but in this case, I handpicked well-established To represent uh, yes. your area. Great. Well, um, I, thi I think that uh, there are several that I really respond to. One is Mary Louise's uh, piece, pieces. Marie yep. Louise. Mm -hmm. Hutchinson, is it? That's uh, correct. That's, yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think those are charming, and uh, several others that really strike out the yeah. uh, pastels and uh, back there are yeah. very striking. Yeah. Um, and is there uh, something that you really respond to in this exhibition, Norman, or that is your favorite, or you don't want to go there? Uh, <laughs> I hate to choose favorites, <laughs> to tell you the truth, but I'm just taken by the, you know, the, uh, the, the skill of all the, the you know, the yeah. individual artists and the diversity of technique that Bob's put together, you know, that each person, and, um, Rosalie Nato's work is fabulous, I mean, she's just, you know, 
got a tremendous ability in handling her work and the subjects that she chooses are a little bit different, which I kind of respond to. And Ron Tinney's work I like an awful lot. Uh, and you um, being I love a the plein air painter painter's works yourself. that Bob brought up. Right. You being well, a yeah, plein air painter yourself yeah, exactly. can really can respond to it. That. So I'm happy to hear that the show was well received on the Cape. Uh, do you, I, you do have plans to redo this show again, this, take this concept forward? I <laughs> would love to. But sure. Well, uh, I've been thinking about the next paint and switch, and uh, I'd really like to open it up to a broader group of artists. Uh, and to do that, I do it as a juried show. Uh -huh. So we would put a call for entries out to the many thousands of artists that are uh, within our reach on Cape Cod. In God. one of the art publications, and yes. Yeah, there's, there's many ways to do that. Uh, and um, then we would jury the best show that comes from that. And the same on this end? Absolutely, yeah, we could do the yeah. same and put the reach out to Worcester and surrounding you know, area artists. It would be artists. interesting to see if that ch how that changed from your personal selections. Yeah. You know? I think I what that would do is you'd get a, a huge diversity of work for one thing. Exactly. You know, it wouldn't necessarily be the focus on a, a certain realism or whatever, but we right. put a, a, a whole yeah. wider range of uh, subjects and handling techniques, I would think. I like the idea of doing it kind of as uh, an annual. You know, I can mm -hmm. see that being something people could look forward to. Uh, when I'm, I'm thinking uh, a, a year on, rest a year yeah. on. <laughs> so. I understand that. You'd call yeah. it the biennial yeah. paint this, switch. This, this, <laughs> was, um, this was a lot of work. It really oh, was. Oh, you've uh, done a wonderful job. Yeah. I, the publicity yeah. and the, uh, the, hang, the installations, the, everything yeah. has been mm -hmm. Very, very nicely yeah. done. I'm, I'm delighted. Yeah. And we're having the opening here today. Uh, unfortunately, the show closes when? Uh, June 16th. Your show yep. at the Prince and Potter Correct. is closing yep. the 16th right. of June. And your show? May 26th. May 26th. Ours so went up earlier. So you have to, uh, if you haven't gotten there yet, you'll have to watch for it next time. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, anyway, I'm very happy to be part of the show, and I'm very happy to get reconnected with you, Bob, and thanks for putting this together for the city. And uh, the other thing I'd say is that there's always something great to see at the Prince and Potter Gallery, so come on down and take a look. It's a wonderful place to look at art, look at fine things, find gifts, and so forth. So uh, hope to see you again next time for another edition of Arts and Ideas.